Hey everyone, welcome back to the Gaming Sphere of weekly video game editorials, news, and gameplay. So first off, happy 2022. I hope you all had a wonderful holidays and new year. And to kick off the new year, Square Enix has announced a press release of its interest in implementing NFTs into future games, which was met with the expected backlash. Yosuke Matsuda, the present CEO of Square Enix, has made an announcement literally at the start of the new year, January 1st. We're exploring potential efforts in the cloud space from two primary perspectives, the first being leveraging cloud technologies to distribute content, and the second being developing content that offers customers new forms of excitement enabled by the cloud's attributes. I realize that some people who play to have fun who currently form the majority of the players have voiced their reservations towards these trends and understandably so. However, I believe that there will be a certain number of players whose motivation is to play to contribute, by which I mean to help make the game more exciting. He's talking about user-generated content. I see this as one reason that there haven't been as many major game-changing content that there were users generated as one would expect. So I'm making this video to hopefully bring some clarity on the matter with my honest opinion as not just a regular gamer but as someone who's also dabbled in blockchain programming and kept their finger on the pulse of what's going on in cryptocurrency i feel like i'm probably one of the better people to give you an informed opinion of what this means more so than the echo chamber that is twitter who from the many comments that i've read apparently only understand nfts from sound bites and headlines and just a preface i am disabling comments in this video specifically because given what I can only describe as prideful ignorance when it comes to NFTs by people who, one, don't really understand what it is, two, have no interest in understanding what it is, and three, yet are quick to form a very strong opinion of it. This is the one case where enabling messages only seems to further spread that sentiment. So you can stop watching or unsubscribe if you feel so offended by anything I'm about to say. But as anyone who's followed this channel knows by now, I tell it like it is. I do the best to provide an informed opinion and no game franchise gaming company ever gets a free pass from me. So just to get that out of the way, my honest opinion. I'm cautiously optimistic about Square Enix potentially utilizing and leveraging NFT technology into their games. And just to be clear, once again, for the thousandth time, NFT, which stands for non-fungible token, is just a technology protocol like TCP IP built on top of blockchain technology. It's not inherently destructive to the environment. It doesn't inherently make a game pay to play or play to earn. I've already made a video on these misconceptions, so I'm not going to waste my time debating with the echo chamber of Twitter. Just take my word for it. As a computer scientist who has studied this technology at the code level, and as a gamer, NFTs and blockchain are just another tool, like internet functionality, multiplayer co-op, game libraries, VR, AR, and the metaverse, or whatever futuristic holodeck horseshit they come up with down the line. The point is this, and this is really the core issue around Square's decision with NFTs, and the only question you really need to ask yourself as a gamer of said games. Will the games that they build as a result be fun? Will they have fun at the forefront of their design? Because that's primarily what gamers care about before anything else, at least for me, why I play any game comes down to one very simple thing, whether or not it's fun, and that's it. If it's fun and engaging, and an engaging experience first and foremost, what technology they use to make that happen may be a consideration, but it's always secondary. Its purpose is to facilitate the fun factor. When a game is no longer fun for whatever reason, whether because it didn't implement that technology very well, like multiplayer co-op being crap, or it was only released on mobile with clunky controls like War of the Lions, or whether it abused that technology like hiding vital content behind a DLC paywall like Final Fantasy XV, I stopped playing, period, simple as that. Matsuda's statement about NFTs being a possible play to contribute is a legitimate consideration speaking from a gameplay standpoint where I can see it being potentially, potentially transformative to the fun factor in games like Brave Exvius or even Final Fantasy XIV. However, of course, I can also see a scenario where NFTs are detrimental, whether it's Square Enix that abuses them or even its players. The biggest backlash against all this has been some variation of this. 
that Square Enix is just a greedy company that just cares about milking as much money from its customers as possible. Same with Ubisoft, same with Activision Blizzard, Sega, Nintendo, XYZ. And therefore, NFTs are just another way for them to milk the customers even harder and ruin the games that we already enjoy. That argument was made when Final Fantasy XI launched with the online store and also with the MOG station for Final Fantasy XIV. But its players played those games anyways and purchased items from their respective stores. Why? Because its players see value in it relative to their fun playing the game. You can dismiss that as greed all you want, but its players clearly saw enough value in its existence for that ecosystem to thrive. In fact, Final Fantasy XIV even had to go so far as to stop selling the game because it was too popular. Because if players saw no value in it and paid no money, or paid less money than was commensurate with the value that they got in it, of course it would die out. The point being that if Square or anyone implements NFTs into their games with the mindset of using that NFT technology to make the game fun, first and foremost, and if that game is actually fun, then NFTs, XYZ, WTF, or whatever the hell else comes up down the line, I'm playing it, and I suspect many of you will play it too. However, if they implement NFTs in a way that hinders the gaming experience to the point where it's no longer fun, then I'll stop playing it. So taking the stance that Square Enix or XYZ company is getting into NFTs because they're just greedy is a moot point. Of course they're greedy. They're a video game company. They're a business that's out to make money because they need money to operate. If you think that Square or anyone is making games purely out of charity, then you're either dumb high or both. But that's besides the point anyways, because if it were, you'd have stopped playing Final Fantasy XI, XIV, VII, World of Warcraft a long time ago. The real point is this. Does whatever decision they make regarding NFTs or anything else ultimately provide a gaming experience that you enjoy as a result? Put another way, for you Final Fantasy XIV players out there, including myself, if Square Enix were to hypothetically implement NFTs into Final Fantasy XIV today, and the game was still fun to play, I mean, sure, there'll be somewhat differences depending on how the NFTs are implemented. Maybe there will be people conducting RMT, even though that's kind of happening already anyways. The usual positives and negatives that crop up from experimenting with anything new. But the game, as you know it, is still super fun to play. Would you stop playing it tomorrow? My guess is you wouldn't, and neither would I. And why would we? It's fun to play, and we play games to have fun. Now, if they implemented NFTs into 14 in a way that devolve the game into a degenerate gambling hub or turn the community super toxic, would I stop playing it tomorrow? Hell no. I'd stop playing it right this second, and so should you. I think the inherent assumption that everyone's going off of is that NFTs will inherently make a game less fun to play to the point where you don't even want to play the game anymore, which I'd argue is no truer than whether or not internet connectivity and the MOG station made the game less fun to the point where you didn't want to play the game anymore. Because if NFTs were put into Final Fantasy XIV and the game was still really fun to play, but you refused to play it anyways just because NFTs existed in the game, that sounds less about playing a video game to have fun and more about some personal or philosophical issue you have against NFTs as a technology. Am I saying that Square Enix is going to implement NFTs in the most radically transformative way possible that will make every game 100 times funner? Of course not. They can completely fuck this up, intentionally or not. Like with all nascent technology, its first few iterations are going to stumble, and the first people who walk through that door tend to get shot first. But someone had to stumble through that door before its subsequent iterations got any better, and only history can really judge if it was worth it or not. I remember the same backlash when the internet was a new thing. I remember the backlash against email, and QuickBooks Online, and banking online, as bizarre as that sounds now. Same thing with social media. The prevailing argument at that time being, why the hell would anyone want to share their personal intimate moments online for everyone to see? Yet here we are. Here you are, watching this video on YouTube. First it was MySpace, then Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Discord, TikTok. Why? Because its users clearly saw some value in what it had to offer as far as what they wanted out of a communications platform, which was social connectivity. Enough to offset their ideological reservations or its potential pitfalls. And that'll be the same with NFTs and video games as well. With that value being the fun factor, will fun still be at the core of the game design philosophy or will it give way to tokenomics? If it's the former, I'm all for it. If it's the latter, I'll look for a game elsewhere that does prioritize the fun factor. 
And social media is a pretty telling example of the play to contribute. What Matsuda is talking about is user generated content. Social media, as it stands now, when you tweet or post something, that content that you generated doesn't belong to you. It actually belongs to Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. Decentralized gaming and user generated content means that in theory, the content you create, the avatars you create, the stuff that you craft, the items you craft, the characters that you buff up, they belong to you, even if Square Enix's servers went down. So I'm only just cautiously optimistic about Square in particular getting into NFTs because NFT games right now in its current state are being made by super small indie developers. Like we're talking super low budget freelance web only games made by teams of less than 10 people. So their games, not surprisingly, lack polish in the fun factor. So they put tokenomics at the core of the game design in hopes that the gimmick will be the fun factor itself, which it clearly isn't to any gamer who plays games primarily for fun, as Matsuda is saying. But this will be the first time that a large game developer is getting into it with huge stakes for not just them, but the future of the gaming industry as a whole. A game like Stalker 2, made by GSC Game World, canceled its NFT plans after the backlash against the idea. I'm not expecting a larger developer like Square to back down so easily. If there's an opportunity to capitalize on a technology that can potentially enhance the gaming experience, then they'll do it. So I'm genuinely curious to see how it all plays out. My guess is like it was with mobile games and VR and AR, gamers will mainly still care about whether or not the game is fun at the end of the day.